One of the weird things that you'll find with snake oil salesmen and grifters, especially if they employ shills, is after a while when the heat is on and, and they don't want to pick back anything, they'll um, make up a will under their stage name and then a rumor will be spread that they're dead and then their partner will take over for it <clears throat> and a new shell will show up that looks you know within a year or so looks like they could be a relative of the person who died and then eventually quietly at the next town that shell will become the second banana in the project again until things get nasty and then that person suddenly ends up dead. Now this works great in the stagecoach and uh, and uh, you know uh, Wild West methodologies, but these days actually it's still done. David Wynn Miller was born in the 1940s or something. Has two different dates for being dead. Uh, one of them only occurs in a find a grave that was absolutely based on a video that somebody posted claiming that he had died June 22nd 2018 it's a video that ends in I think it's uh, khe 52 m you'll see below in the description meanwhile um, June 22nd 2019 I mean, the video came out before the 2019 version of it. He was actually declared dead on paper with someone willing to sign, a, you know, a, you know, in, an, you know, in case of perjury thing, declaring the, um, the estate for him. Uh, Laura Ann Miller, Mary Margaret Miller, Mark Wayne Miller, Paul Adam Hendrickson and somebody named Kathleen and f several different names but one of them being Miller apparently or not all being potentially heirs and a reference to a six hundred and forty seven dollar and eighty one cent uh, electric power bill that hadn't been pla uh, paid so there was a claim against the uh, estate and a it looks like a $1,340 claim against the estate from Universal Health Services. All in 2019 that were happened after the, uh, the proceedings started, it seems. And this is at WCCA.WICourts, Wisconsin Courts.gov, case detail HTML case number and that's 2019 PR 001014 uh, county number 40 index 0 uh, you can see the link below some claimed he died June 2018 long before he would have been dead another person also you know this is sovereign citizen quantum grammar Nazi bullshit and yeah they have very similar characteristics Deciding to twist words to where they mean something completely unrelated, like saying uh, to harbor somebody has to do with, you know, it's obviously a nautical term, therefore it's only for boats. Or uh, that if you're born, your birth certificate is for a birth, which is a term in, you know, maritime law. These kinds of twistings of words, well, a person is only a literal living human citizen, according to the illogic that is run by if you type it out the way that a person demands it be put out in some overly floofy way with dashes and hyphens and unnecessary colons and you know maybe you know irritable bowel syndrome and of course in the paperwork declaring him dead anywhere people are very careful not to use his specific way of writing out his name in both cases oddly enough But I'm not saying he staged his death to avoid some legal consequences. But then again, legally speaking, if everyone claims you're dead and in your family, and that you uh, you were you were not buried, but you were your body was cremated according to family tradition, 
in some areas, uh, unless they have valid reasons to believe that this is a sham, which in case of David uh, Wynn Miller and everybody else like him, no one would take them at their word even if the corpse was right in front of them, um, you, you can't really declare a person alive afterwards. But this has actually happened several times. It's not unusual for people to just get rid of their identity and have themselves declared dead. Your relatives in many states can declare you dead if, by a preponderance of evidence, it's it's assumed that you're dead. For instance, lost at sea and that sort of thing. How very, very close to the sovereign citizen birther arguments. And yes, I lump them together because they're lumped together under subcategory of pseudo-legal bullshit. But let's go on. He was an early eight, 1980s machinist, not 1880s, 1980 machinist, from Wisconsin, who wound up convinced the legal system was just an arcane linguistic process, which in some ways it was, and people were acknowledging it and converting over to ordinary speech like you and I use. Getting rid of the Latin terms and, and you know, if, for, and, but. And if you want to see an excellent example of obtuse, obscure horseshit for the legal system, look at any law passed recently, because people put it that way, and then everybody gets us to weed through it, and end up rewriting it in decisions based on it so that it can be understood in a court of law to a jury because the jury does not contain fucking lawyers but let's move on did you know a jury can just ignore the court and just nullify as long as it's a case where a person cannot be tried twice anyway he tried to game and override the system using an unparsable invented language ironically saying that it's not invented that it's the true language when obviously it isn't and said it was correct way to parse sentence, grammar, quantum, whatever. Instead of reading up on the law and trying to learn it, understand it, or in his own defense, uh, trying to figure out what was being said in court because a lot of the time it's crap. Like, the information crime is, why are you using the words information crime in the information age when that would be interpreted badly? Let's try updating our linguistic skills in, in the law. There's nothing wrong with that. And in the 1980s, that was a movement done by lawyers because they got tired of people saying, the only reason I'm using you is an interpreter. In court, you're allowed to override your lawyer by saying, you're an interpreter, I'm defending myself because it's my ass. You don't go to prison if you make a mistake. And people have demanded that the court acknowledge, I'm defending myself because I'm legally allowed to. I'm not required to use a lawyer and I'm not required to use legalese. And this has actually worked in court. It's not creating a fake language. It's I'm not letting you use a language that's impenetrably hard to understand. Simple concepts such as the reason for self-defense in the United States with a, with a firearm requiring that you kill somebody or at least try to kill them instead of defending yourself by wounding or scaring them away is based on the conclusion that you really didn't feel that your life was in danger, therefore you don't have a right to defend yourself. This has been done in court and is wrong and should be legally invalid. It should never be allowed in court. I should be allowed to defend myself in such a way that I don't kill the person as a first resort and a last resort, definitive, definitively stated. Emphasis added by the legal system. The last resort is killing somebody. And that has been used in court to explain to someone that's not a good defense or, in this case, prosecution of someone who defended their life and simply failed to kill somebody. That's not acceptable. Trying to say someone who clearly defended themselves wasn't allowed to. Usually it's done when someone shoots at or defends himself against a cop that got drunk one night and started shooting the neighbor. It's an indefensible point. You can't really get away with defending that kind of behavior out of a police officer, but they'll try. The 2018 Rest in Peace citation was a YouTube video with no citations. Therefore, it's invalid period, full stop. And his relatives in court say he died in 2019, exactly a year later, calendar year later. Sounds like predictive programming. Or maybe he really did die in 2018, but it wasn't convenient for them to have it be that date, so they falsified it. There was no assertion about any of it, and there is no entered data. And people citing something in Canada, a Canadian argument, a Canadian statement was an offhand comment about him being dead by that date and then it cited a source that doesn't mention him at all much less mention him being dead and then later apparently did mention him but still didn't mention him being dead so 
a legal paper in Canada had a citation that was invalid. None of the sources mentioned David Wynn Miller suddenly passing away due to choosing a bad doctor or anything else. There's a claim at 20-something that he went to a doctor because of a kidney problem and offered no proof of it, and that the doctor somehow had made a mistake and removed both of his kidneys, adrenal glands, and while he was on the autopsy table, he woke up, apparently without kidneys, and stopped aging. Now, of course, un under no circumstances would that make sense, except for one possible combination, if you're not aware of it. Um, he could have had, a, 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 well, a defective adrenal gland, or adrenal glands, or whatever, and he could also have had been born with more than two kidneys. Some people are born with a conjoined twin or an absorbed twin or a vanishing twin condition where they'll have an extra kidney or two. And sometimes they're on one side fused together and they behave badly. And sometimes they become constrained or damaged and or cancerous because the absorbed twin wasn't genetically identical or the reason it didn't form correctly is it had a genetic defect, so it can form cancers. So to save the person's life, you remove both of the extra kidneys on one side, so the person spends their life with one kidney. It's easy to confirm because you'll see a wound on their back. That's it. As for adrenal glands, I only know of a couple of people who've had any kind of adrenal surgery. I don't know what would happen if you removed the or a adrenal gland. I'm not going to do any of that. The point is, the guy said he stopped aging, and that was when he decided to become a guru. Um, next, the only reference to his death in 2018, offhand remark in a Canadian law case, cited in another case that didn't say he was dead yet, or even at one point mentioned him, because there's revisions. A 2019 citation leads to a document legally asserting him dead, but doesn't provide a death certificate. Which, if you're doing someone's agreed upon, you know, estate, you're supposed to have that in there. Statements and beliefs are practices that deviate significantly from accepted understandings of something, have to have that uh, fall under extraordinary claims, need extraordinary proof, or a notation that they are outdated. In the case of law and jurisprudence, you can't do this while claiming to be based on accepted law or accepted legal doctrine in the past. You have to claim a new one. This is the equivalent to citing Black's Law's dictionary, a version of it you have before airplanes were a thing, and claiming that it invalidates regulations on airplanes because you want to fly your airplane. That's actually happened. And when the judge pointed out that you were citing something that didn't exist before planes existed, this has also been done to try to claim that you could tax people or, or, excuse me, charge them a toll for flying over your ranch when they're almost two or three, three miles up. Your ranch is only a mile across, let's say. It's a ranch house. Um, that that's not acceptable. And when someone cited it, they said, you're citing, the quote is, you're deliberately citing law that existed in an era that does not take this into account. We update laws. And the person boldly says, any law change is illegal. And then the response was, well, uh, original law in the United States at the forming of the United States did not give you the right to have this court case, so have a good day. And then I'm just throw the court case out. I mean, if you want to go there, that means your Second and First Amendments don't exist either. They are amendments. That's their name. <clears throat> Other examples. Um, no instance of your assertion being upheld in a court of law claiming they had been. Statements and beliefs that are claimed to originate from statutes or legal principles that the person believes in, but there's no record of. Assertion invoked through secret parallel legal system put over the top of it. Um, he claimed at 25 a Korean doctor did that horrible thing to him. Did they charge 250 when he died? Did he really die to visit his death? Did he claim to be king of Hawaii by creating a grammatical argument and therefore some sort of legal precedent? These and other questions will never be answered. No citation has been given for the man being dead, except, well, one case, and I'm kind of dubious on it. So what year did he die? When did he die? And why do people think somehow that he suddenly passed due to a bad doctor's behavior when that's actually his meme about him never aging again because he was had all his kidneys ripped out or something? Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck.